It was during the Vietnam War. I got this group of lawyers who are also protesting the, uh, the war in Vietnam and our failure to bring it to an end. And uh, I, I think I formed the group and we rented major hotel in Boston and then invited the professors at all the law schools in the surrounding area, which meant Harvard and BU and BC and Suffolk and what have you, all the students and professors who wanted to attend. And I had some speakers. I was one of them. And lo and behold, I had 400 people show up. And we, we were, they were sitting in the aisles. And I had invited the Soviet ambassador. It had to do with the tensions between our countries. And the title was something like, why are we sniping at each other? What do we, what, what, what real interests are we trying to protect? So I invited the Soviet ambassador. We were sending the deputy ambassador there who would come and give and a talk. We, we gave talks there. And when the talks were done, I wanted to get over to tell my, the, my Russian Sokolov. I wanted to get over to talk with him because I was very interested because I had heard expressions of their views toward the United States as not being obstinate. They're wondering, why do you hate us? What's the matter? What, what's the real problem? And I was so taken by this question that I was trying to get to him when the talk was over. I couldn't get through the group that had gathered on the stage. There were 25 people between me and Sokolov. And I got the words I wanted in Russian because I studied Russian because I thought I'd be the first American lawyer to negotiate with the Soviets, as they were then called. I am at the bottom of the stairs leading to the stage. Sokolov is trapped by a crowd of people and I reach back in my memory and I call out, Gaspardin Sokolov, etet ocean herashol yet. And everybody pulls back, a path opens, and he puts out his hand as he's coming up the stairs and, or down, whatever. And I'm doing the same, and then he, he suddenly pulls back and says, Nyet! And I say, what's the matter? And then he stops and he shakes his head negatively. He says, no, no, it can't be in English. It can't be. You're not from the CIA. If you were from the CIA, you wouldn't have addressed me in Russian. I said, that's right, we men, and shook hands. And he leaned over, he's sitting two or three feet away from me during the presentation on the stage. He says, where the hell did you learn to speak Russian like that? And I had a bulb go off of my head, and I'll never forget. I said, it's a long but very interesting story. Why don't we go somewhere now? If you're still interested, I'll tell you. I said, look, I have a meeting tonight with my board of directors for the Lawyers Alliance, which was the group that had organized this and that I was head of. And I said, why don't you come out there and meet my, my uh, colleagues? We'll get you home. And it's out in Belmont and I said, if you want to feel safe, I see the, I see the guns bulging from under the shirts of your guards, bring them along. I said, I, I'm sure we'll both find it very interesting. Sure. 
taking the keys to my car, which was down in the basement, and grabbing one of the people who had come with me and, and said, it's a Buick, here's the license number. <laughs> Bring my car, will you? So I don't want to be stranded out there. So I threw them the keys, and I went out with Sokolov, and we were in the back of a car. He had two guys with him, and he and I were sitting together in the back seat. Oh, it's so cool. And chatting. During the course of that chat, I said to him, you know, both, both countries are acting like little children. We're not going to go to war with each other. Why, why, did, why the mistrust? You got bright people over there. We have too. I mean, I'm, I'm not exempting us from this. Thank God, it was the end of the day, and for the first time I was bossing the heavy traffic because we could normally have gotten out to the house in Belmont where I was meeting my colleagues in 20 minutes. It took us over three quarters. Of we are lawyers. We are in the business of negotiating solutions, working them out. Well, if our governments won't talk to each other, that doesn't mean we can't. So we had quite a chat on the way to Belmont. And I said, why just get some, a group together? And he said, I'll try. The Russians picked a group. I stayed in touch with them. Roger Fisher was well known and I, and my group selected him as leader of our group, Lawyer Lanark, it was Lawyers Alliance for Nuclear Arms Control. They put together a group and they contacted us and we met with them. They came over, we met them with them in Boston, then in Washington and then at the Aerody Conference Center in Virginia. They came over and we negotiated for 10 days. We negotiated the first nuclear arms control treaty totally without recognition or acceptance by our government. But I did have some powerful people in our delegation. I, I, I picked up a senator here and there and, and a few other people. We had a recognizably intelligent and persuasive group. And the Russians had some powerful people. All of this was against the uh, attitude of the Reagan government who tried to stop us. And there was only the presence of Griswold, the former dean of Harvard Law School and a very well-known person who had been in the Department of Defense, that we, we were able, they, they admitted the Russians. So the Russians came over. We got, we got the agreement.